So thank you all for coming, you that are in person. It's nice to see friendly faces, at least so far so good. The topic is Medicare Made Simple, and we also have a number of people that are listening by way of a webinar. Hopefully between both groups of people, you do indeed either have a folder and it's orange. Everything in the folder is going to be yours to keep. And for those that are on the webinar, we did send you all of this information in advance. So you'll be able to refer to that as well. So my name is Nancy Corser, and I work at Cornerstone Retirement Partners along with Amy Orr. Amy's in the audience as well. And we are the health insurance side of the business. So at Cornerstone Retirement Partners, we're located right in Grand Rapids. We have the financial side or the wealth management side, and then we have the health insurance side. And that's been particularly helpful for people because it's all one-stop shopping. You come in and you need help with your health insurance. We're here to help you with that. Today's topic is Medicare. Although we do help with people that are under the age of 65 that might need help with Obamacare or the marketplace. And by the same token, we have two financial advisors that if you ever have questions about a 401k or an IRA or a Roth or taxes or anything along that line, they're available to assist as well. But again, we connect the health with the wealth and today's topic is gonna to be Medicare. Now we're gonna talk about Medicare in a couple of different ways, if you will. And it, it's going to be a fairly high level presentation because we're gonna be together about 50 minutes, 55. And if you have questions, let's keep them until the end unless there's something about the presentation and you go, you know what, that just doesn't make sense. I, I'm confused because chances are if you don't get it, somebody else also is not gonna understand. And we might as well address it right then and there. Otherwise, we'll make sure at the end of the presentation, there is time for additional questions. By the same token, because it's kept high level, we're not gonna get into any real specifics about your situation. So what we extend to you is a no cost consultation. You'll have an opportunity when you fill out the questionnaire or the evaluation form. If you would like to come in and talk to us, we would be more than happy to, to provide assistance. There's never a cost for any of that. It's not just me anymore. It used to be I was the only person. I've been doing this for about 20 years. For the first 10 years, I was it. I did it all. I mean, I made the cookies. I made the photocopies, you name it. So over the last 10 years, I have been fortunate in having other people help me. And now we also have another licensed agent. And she's an independent agent, just like myself, meaning that we represent all the different insurance companies. Today's topic is not going to focus on any particular company per se. Again, I represent the vast majority of them, nor are we going to be talking about any specific plan, okay? We are gonna differentiate between what is a Medicare Advantage plan, and they're still running all the ads on TV, you know, call us, call us, call us, in danger, danger. If you call, let me tell you, they will not leave you alone. So be very wary of picking up the phone and asking for help. And then we're also going to talk about the Medigap plan. So there's two options to your supplemental because Medicare does not pay for everything. And you want to look at filling in the gap. So we're going to speak to that a little bit as well. So having said that, the folder is yours. The first thing I wanted to do is make sure that you understood that Medicare has different enrollment periods and they mean different things. And for anybody who's either getting into Medicare or is already in Medicare, and let's just take a quick moment here and ask you this, for the folks that are in the room, with a show of a hand, who is already on Medicare Part A and B? One, two, three, okay. Who within the next year will be eligible for Medicare? One, two, three, four, quite a few of you, excellent, okay. So I would tell you, those that are within a year, this is a perfect time to get started because it does take time to understand all the parts and pieces of Medicare. You will get bombarded with information, okay? And again, be wary of who you talk, especially when it comes to picking up the phone and dialing those 1-800 numbers. Is there anybody not 
turning 65 within the next year. They're younger than that. Yeah, we've got Jennifer, a couple other people. So for you, it's a little introduction into what Medicare is gonna look like, but it does take time to kind of grasp all the moving parts and pieces. And that's what we're gonna to begin to talk about today. So having said that, the enrollment periods are the initial enrollment period. We're gonna talk about that to start with. So for those of you that will be turning 65, okay, you will be granted what's called an initial enrollment period. And if you read all the goodies that come in the mail, they will talk about a seven month window. The seven month window has got to do with if you are not on social security, you have to actually make your Medicare happen, okay? so. If you're on Social Security, your enrollment in Medicare is automatic. So anybody that's on Social Security, what's the earliest age you can sign up for Social Security? 62, that's right. So if you've signed up for Social Security at 62 or 63 or 64, three months before you turn 65, your card comes in the mail. So they make it very easy, okay? And when the mail and when the card comes in the mail, it is in a brown or a white envelope and it looks like junk mail. So be careful you don't throw it away. Not to say you can't get it replaced, but you do want to be on the lookout. But for those people, it's fairly easy. And the decision that they will have to make is, am I actually going to take my Medicare? And I say that because if you're working, you may decide, you know what, I've got my group plan through work. I don't need to take Medicare right now. Those are, again, things that we help people with. And when we get into real more unique situations, we will counsel you on that. You've got a group plan. Let's take a look at that. But let's step back here and talk about the person who's in their initial election period. They are not on Social Security, so they're not going to get anything that's automatic, okay? But they are contemplating, am I going to take my Medicare and what's all involved? So from our perspective, just know that the, the more time you give to it up front, the easier it's going to be. So again, for those of you that are six months or 12 months out, this is good. You're starting to get your feet wet. You're going to get stuff in the mail. Now it's going to make a little bit more sense to you. So let's pretend that we have a person whose date of birth up here, let's say that they're going to be 7 3 1958 okay so the people that are born in 1958 they're turning 65 this year all right so this person makes an appointment and we have an office right in grand rapids we'll do phone appointments we'll do zoom appointments whatever you're most comfortable with but they say you know what we're interested in finding out more about our medicare planning what's all involved here so the first thing we always tackle is the enrollment side of things, okay? Again, if you're not on Social Security, you need to know what to do. Now, I would tell you, you could call Social Security. They are scheduling almost two months out, and they don't want you in the office. They will do everything over the phone, and it isn't easy to try to figure it all out. So that is one of the things as a firm I think that makes us different is we say we will help you on the front end in terms of getting enrolled in Medicare if it's the right move for you. I also have a contact person at Social Security. If I run into something that's a little unusual, then I can make a phone call and she will help me through it. But having said that and having done this for as long as I have, here's what the seven months looks like. This is what they're saying. They're saying this person was born in July. So the middle month here or month number four, whoops, is July, okay? This is when this person is considering taking their Medicare. So the months before are June, May, and April. So they are actually giving you 90 days starting April 1st. You don't have to wait till April 3rd, okay? But they say the three months before your magic, let's turn 65, you get online. So for those of you that have a social security account already set up, it's very easy. It takes about six minutes to enroll in Medicare, okay? 
For those of that you don't have an account, I highly recommend that you do set up an account. And we did provide some instructions in the uh, orange folder on how to set up an account with Social Security. They actually have three methods. The first one is if you've already set up your account prior to September of 2021. The second one is you sign in with an email and you set up your account. And the third one's a little bit trickier to set up, but they strongly encourage you to go out there, set up your account. By the same token, for those that are not yet on Social Security, it's also the same vehicle that you will use to turn on your Social Security. So it's the same website, but you're going to turn on Medicare and you're going to answer the questions in a certain way. And again, that's something that we offer services for you. It takes five or six minutes and you're good to go. But the sooner you do this, the sooner you get your card and the sooner you get approved, if you will, by Medicare, okay? They will tell you that they will require 60 days and they must be behind because I've had a lot of clients that have said, Nance, I still don't have my card. And we look at when we applied and it's already been 60 days. So they are running behind, but make sure that you plan accordingly in terms of your time. So you would actually get into the system in either April, May or June, and they will automatically give you the seventh month, you will be given an effective date of 7-1-2023 for your Part A and your Part B, okay? So that is for the person who says, I'm coming off of the Affordable Care Act. I need my Medicare. You can't stay on it. So if anybody's on it and you're getting a subsidy and you think, ooh, I'm only paying $32, guess what? You can't stay because they will take away the subsidy credit if you are on Obamacare or the marketplace. So you must transition into Medicare unless you are working, okay? The person that is working that approaches turning 65, the government says the following. You're working. You don't plan on retiring. The key is this, there must be 20 or more employees on the group plan. Is there anybody still working that's getting ready to turn 65? Okay, all right. But the government's very clear. If there are 20 or more, you do not have to sign up for Part B. They would actually prefer you sign up for Part A. And the reason for that is Part A has no premium. So it's zero. So there's no downside to signing up for Part A, except if you're working and you're on an HSA. So the person that's working, they're on an HSA, don't sign up for Part A, okay? And again, this is why we will counsel people individually. These are the questions that we ask. Are you still working? Are you on an HSA? So on and so forth. But back to this person here. So what they will receive is they'll receive a letter that says we're processing everything and then before you know it, they'll get their card in the mail, okay? So this is a service that we provide. I don't get paid for that, nor am I employed by Medicare or Medicaid, but where I will help you is with a supplemental and we're gonna talk about that as well, okay? All right, so this is the initial enrollment. Is there anybody, it doesn't sound like it, is there anybody working who's gonna turn 65 and keep working at 66 and 67 and 68, maybe? Okay, no health plan. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna stop there because we don't need to go any further. Let's do this though. What we don't know, I won't spend a lot of time on it. And what we don't know are the people that are on the webinar. So I will just briefly mention this. And again, this is something we can certainly help with. So we're still talking about the enrollment in Medicare. How do I get enrolled in Medicare? First, you have to determine whether or not it's appropriate, okay? So if you are still working, you don't get the IEP. It's done and gone. You turn 65, you said, you know what? I'm not gonna take it, okay? I'm not signing up for Part B. Let's assume this person signed up for Part A. They will always give you you're turning 65 date when you sign up in the beginning here. So this person has a card only for Medicare Part A and they're still working, okay? So the person that is still working, when it's time for them to call it quits and they don't have health insurance, 
and they don't have retiree insurance because there's a few companies that still offer that, they have to apply for their Part B because they don't have it, okay? So the government says, give us 60 days and we're gonna give you two forms. We help with the forms. First one is called the 40B. Medicare and Social Security have all these different form numbers. Basically, the 40B says, I want my Part B to start. We write it right in there. And in this particular case, this person would say, let's say that they decided they turned 65. They changed their mind at the end of the year. They were like, you know what? I've had enough. I am quitting. So they wanted 12 one. So they would come and say, this is what I need. Now, keep in mind, there's Social Security and there's Medicare. Medicare provides your government health benefit. It's been around since 1965. Does anybody remember who the president was? It was. That's right, LBJ. So it was all part of the great society. And he said, people need insurance when they retire. Let's help them with their health insurance. And then there is a payroll tax that you actually pay. So this person said, I signed up for A when I could. I turned 65. Now they're getting ready to call it quits. They need their health insurance. They would come and see me or they could call Social Security or get online. And they would be told they need two forms. The first one is I want my Part B to start. And they would be very clear that they wanted it to start 12-1. And the reason for that is you pay for Part B. It's not free, okay? So why sign up for something that you're not ready yet to pay for, nor do you need, okay? So the Part B date over here is actually the 12-1. And this would be the 7-1, given our scenario right here. And the second form is going to be an employer form. I'll just talk my way through that. So we have two forms. We had the 40B that said, I want my Part B. Part B, 40B, that's the name of the form. That person fills it out, it's very straightforward. The next one is an employer form and they know about this form and it basically says, look it, I was working, I turned 65, but you got to provide proof that you were working for an employer that had 20 or more employees that explains why you didn't sign up for Part B when you should have, okay? And if you didn't, then you're going to be penalized. So that 20 employee rule is pretty important. So I will get people that will say, nope, there's only 12 people. I'm still working. Do I have to do something? Yes, you do have to sign up for Part B. So the government says if there's 20 or less employees and you're turning 65, you got to take your Medicare. But if you're working more than 20 employees, you don't have to sign up for Part B, okay? So this person is actually granted what is called a special election period. So that was the second one. This is when you turn 65. This is, oh, I'm going to wait for a little while, okay? And there are other rules that apply, but for the most part, what you need to know is give yourself at least 60 days to plan. You're going to have two forms that you have to fill out, and they do go to Social Security because it's Social Security that actually does the enrollment for Medicare, and they collect the Part B premium. So over here is Social Security. They work closely with Medicare. Medicare determines the claims eligibility and whether or not they're gonna cover the medical service, okay? So two different animals here, all right. And the Social Security office for people in Kent County is right over here uh, off of the East Beltline on NAM, okay? Any questions about this part of it? No, okay. All right. So the only other ones that are out there, just see, you might hear about them. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it. There's two other ones. The first one is called the annual election period. Anybody that's already on Medicare knows that this is the time of the year. It starts 1015. Boy, these markers. There we go. 1015 through 127. And it's for plans that become effective the first of the following year. Okay. So this is when we as a group, a team, there's three of us, busier than you can hardly imagine. You might as well bring in a cot. 
because Sue knows because she's been in the office. We meet with hundreds of people. We send out a postcard. That's what makes us different because we're not in it just for the one and done. We're in it for the relationship. We're in it to help you every year, make sure that you are in the best possible supplemental plan. So everybody has to have A and B. That's a given, okay? So we're gonna move on from there. But the annual election period is a type of enrollment period that says if you are on Medicare, you will be given an opportunity between the 15th of October and December to make a plan change. If you don't make a plan change, you will automatically be renewed into whatever that new plan looks like the following year. So every October 1st, every insurance company plan sends what they call an annual notice of change. And that annual notice of change will explain the changes for the upcoming year. So we always encourage our clients to review that first. And then if you have some questions, certainly come in and see us as well, okay? So this is when a person can make a change on what we call an advantage plan. We're going to talk about that and a prescription drug plan in a moment that will make a little more sense. But this is for somebody already in Medicare. I also do a class in the fall here at David Carrier and we talk about the annual election period. Now, sometimes people call it the open enrollment. They actually have an open enrollment. It's a little different than this. So technically this is its proper name annual election period. The GEP stands for the general election period. So the person who didn't do anything when they were supposed to, they didn't sign up for part A and part B. They're like, ooh, I missed the timeline. They get penalized. And then there is a period of time with which they can enroll, okay? So I won't go into great detail because hopefully everybody here says, you know what, I've either done it properly and I'm up and running, or please, again, we'll be happy to help you make sure that you adhere to all the timetables and that you understand everything. Because there are windows of time. Yeah, after the seventh, you're locked out. You can't make a change unless you moved or there was some kind of special circumstance. Okay. All right, so now we're going to refer to some of the information here in the folder. So let us first let you know that the agenda here, it says Medicare Made Simple, introduction, we're not going to go through a lot of that, but I am going to kind of follow a little bit what we have here. So it will make sense as we kind of go through it. So eligibility. Nobody pays for Part A as long as you've paid into the system at least 10 years. If a person has been disabled, they generally receive their Medicare 24 months later. So I had somebody this morning, she's 48 years old. So she filed for Social Security disability. She now is eligible for Medicare and she will come in next week and I will help her. Most of us come aboard when we're 65 or when we've left the group plan and now we need our health insurance. I've had even people that are well into their 80s. They love their jobs and they're like, you know what? I'm not ready for Medicare. I think the oldest one I had was like 82. So if you have group coverage, you know you can stay. Otherwise, you move into Medicare. So Medicare is not free. So let's talk about the costs and the coverage. That is best determined by looking at the blue sheet. Now, for those on the webinar, you don't have a blue sheet, I don't think but you will see something entitled 2023 Medicare costs. So we're gonna talk about part A, we're gonna talk about part B, we're gonna talk about part C, and we're gonna talk about part D. Those are the letters of the alphabet that we're gonna focus on. So does anyone know what part A is? Hospital. Hospital, that is correct. So this begins to paint the picture for why people look for additional insurance, because look at all of that out-of-pocket expense. This is called original Medicare, Part A. If you are admitted to the hospital, you will pay $1,600. If you're there 59 days, it's still $1,600. But if you're only there one day, it's $1,600, okay? So it's based on a benefit period of 60 days. If you are still there beyond day 60, now it becomes a $400 a day benefit. Very rare somebody's in the hospital that long, but if you were there and all you had was the red, white, and blue card, and I didn't actually bring it with me, I have a giant card, I left it at home. But 
if you were on only A and B and had no other insurance, you would have a $1,600 deductible. In fact, last week, Amy took a call. The man said, my wife's in the hospital. They were kind of not living together. He didn't know a whole lot about her financial affairs and her health affairs. He finally figured out she had never done anything other than A and B. And she's in the hospital and she just had part of her leg amputated. So we are going to help her. But it's important that you know Medicare A and B is not going to cover everything. So you might want to evaluate supplemental. Doesn't mean it's a lot of money. You just need to know what your options are. So to continue in the hospital, if I'm still there after day 90, now I invade what I call my lifetime reserve days and it's $800, okay? Had a client during COVID, she knew she was gonna need a double lung transplant. She knew it going into it. She had a pulmonary disorder. Her husband and herself bought the best possible supplemental plan. They knew she was going to need a lung transplant. I get a call. It's at day 95. He's like, Nancy, how is this going to work? I said, it's covered. So he bought a supplemental plan that covered it right up to day 100. Okay. So she paid nothing for the double lung transplant. So, you know, when you, you look at making your supplemental decision, you're looking at it and saying, what health issues do I have? Look at your family history. Is that something that you have a concern about? And then you make the best possible decision. You're not locked in. You're a little more locked in one way than another. And I will explain that in a minute. But it doesn't mean you don't have options and that you don't have flexibility. But I will say, again, back to the education. When you first turn 65, learn as much as you can. You can't make a wrong choice, but at least understand what your choices are, okay? And then I will help explain what you can and you can't do during periods of time. Okay, so to continue, I'm in the hospital, can't go home yet. I may live alone, doesn't really matter. I need some skilled nursing. So the first 20 days are paid for by Medicare. If I'm still there at day 21, I'm going to pay $200 a day, okay? If I'm still there after day 100, I'm probably there. And that's probably where I'm going to be. Okay. And then you're really talking more about things like Medicaid, people that have long-term care insurance. But again, if all you had was original Medicare, you'd be on the hook for $200 a day at day 21 through 100. After 100, it's all private pay. That's your hospital stay. You're admitted to the hospital. You have a doctor, a hospitalist, an anesthesiologist, your food, your medications, your MRIs, your CAT scans, you name it. As long as you're an admitted patient, it gets billed under Part A, okay? Part B, medical services. This is what you pay for. Now, what you pay for is based on your income. So when you look at this year, if you were coming aboard, they look at who is they, Social Security, looks at your yearly income of 2021. They look two years back. And when they look at that income, they're going to say, do you file jointly or do you file as a single person? And you can see what the thresholds are. So if I was a single person in 2021 and my return was 90 some thousand dollars, I'm going to pay $164.90 a month per person. If I'm on Social Security, they're going to take it right out of my Social Security check. If I'm not on Social Security, they're going to send me a quarterly bill. The quarterly bill is constructed where you can either have it deducted from a checking account that you give them, a savings account, have a credit card payment that can be made, or you can just simply make the quarterly payment. Once you're on Social Security, They'll line the two up and then it will automatically come out of your social security check, okay? So if someone is indeed a second tier beneficiary, they, are con they constitute a higher income. So they're gonna look at 2021. Now remember, they're gonna reevaluate it every year. So next year, they're gonna look at 2022 and 2023 and so on and so forth. But generally speaking, they look two years back. So the higher income beneficiary Let's say that their income was filing jointly and they made $200,000. This was the husband and a wife in terms of their income. They will pay per person $230.80 and they get to flip the page over because as a higher income beneficiary, they get tagged with not only a B higher amount, a D, which stands for drugs, 
entire amount. So that person would take the $12.20, they would add it to the $230.80, and that is what they would pay on a month by month basis for that year. Now, once in a while, somebody will say, but I retired. They're looking at my 2021 income tax. That's when I was earning big bucks. This isn't right. They put me at the second tier. So I've got a few folks that I've said, look, this is what you need to do. I have one right now. He has retired. He got a letter from his employer that said he is no longer working for them. His terminated date was February or whatever it was. So the government will look at that. There's a form, there's another form, okay? But they will reevaluate it and say, look, it, he's no longer working. You know, we can't look two years back as if he was a higher income beneficiary. He no longer is a higher income beneficiary. So there is a form. Again, happy to send it to you. It goes to Social Security. They do the reevaluation. And a lot of people have been very successful in saying, look it, I am not the higher income beneficiary. This is the reason why. And then they will adjust it accordingly. Yes. I'm self-employed and age 65 or older and my spouse under or over the age of 65 and working and can I be and hospitalized for her to be covered under the spouse of the employer provided group health program over 20 employees at the employer. Must I take part B at age 65? No plan to do a W-2 employer. Okay. They can indeed take the plan that the spouse has either way. Okay. And as long as there's 20 or more employees on the spouse's plan, they do not have to sign up for part B. Okay. If they are not on an HSA and contributing as an HSA member, then I would recommend that they sign up for part A only. And then that could be done online. And the only thing different about doing that part of it online for A only is when you get into the questions, there's not a lot of them, and it's fairly easy. They will say on the Medicare application, do you want Part B? And you say no. And by default, they give you Part A. And the beauty of at least being in the system is you have your card. And then when you get ready to go back for your Part B, you have your number. Because Medicare has an alphanumeric number. It's 11 digits long, and it's unique to you. So at least you're in their system, and you're not paying anything extra for it. But yes, you can use your spouse's plan. Okay, keep going. All right, sounds good. All right, so yes, sir. These income levels, are they adjusted for inflation? Are they adjusted for inflation each year? Yeah, and I don't know the big formula, but yes. Okay. Yes, they will go up. And then they also have adjusted the tiers in the past. You know, whereas it looked like you fell here, well, now they squashed the tier and now you're in the next one. But yes, they do make those kinds of adjustments, correct. The, yes, I'm sorry. The question was, is there an adjustment for inflation and other kinds of adjustments made for the, the tiers themselves on an annual basis? And the answer is yes. And sometimes the tiers are also adjusted. So it's always a good idea to, it comes out in November, they'll announce all the brand new numbers and all the tiers but they don't stay constant. The numbers on this page change. In fact, interestingly enough, on this page that you see 164.90, last year it was $170.10. It actually went down, which was very unusual. And the reason for that was they had overestimated the costs associated with Alzheimer's because they're spending some money there in terms of research and development. And they came back and they said, we were way off with our adjustment there. It was not as much money as we anticipated. So instead of giving it back last year at some point, because they knew that they had estimated too high, they adjusted it in January. It just made it a lot easier for everybody. So it went from 170.10 to 164.90. Okay, so that's where it's at today. I would anticipate it going up, but we'll see what happens. The other thing that they will do is it cannot go up more than what the cost of living increase is. So a lot of times people will say, okay, great. They gave me 6.7% for my COLA, 
cost of living. And then they bumped this up 6.7. So it was basically the government giveth and the government taketh away. But there are some rules regarding that as well. Yeah. Nope. Some good questions. Okay. So this was original Medicare changes on a regular basis. You know what's what. Now we're going to spend um, one other item on here that I failed to mention is the Part B deductible. And what do you pay for Part B? So Part B, generally, as you hear on TV or you read, Medicare pays 80% and you're going to pay 20%, and it's called a coinsurance. But before that actually kicks in for a Medicare Part B service, you are responsible for the Part B deductible. It is $226. That also went down. Last year, it was $232. So the way it works on your Part B is you're not in the hospital now, but the doctor says you need physical therapy. I need you to see a specialist. You need to go to the urgent care center and have that checked out. You have strep throat, whatever. So that goes through Medicare. Generally speaking, Medicare, Medicare will pay 80% and you're going to pay 20. But the first thing you have to consider is the deductible. So a lot of the supplemental plans, we're going to talk about those here in a minute. A lot of the supplemental plans will pay is 226. They bury it in their pricing and you never see it. But I always want you to know this is original Medicare. Okay. You add nothing to it. First time you go seek a Part B medical service, you're going to pay the first 20, 226. After that, it's going to be 80, 20 in terms of the split. Okay. All right. Any other questions on this page? No. Oh, okay. Okay, so in your folder is a diagram that looks a lot like this, okay? It has a, a line that goes down the middle of the page, okay? So if you could just grab that. Okay, so if you were to come into the office, this is where it gets a little more personalized because we would fill this out for you, okay? So part of our due diligence also is we ask for who your doctors are because if their plan has a network, we need to make sure that they're in the network. We also ask about your prescription drugs, okay? Because we need to make sure the plan that you choose to cover your medications is going to cover your medications based on your pharmacy, based on the meds, so on and so forth. So those are always two pieces of information that we will ask for so that we can be prepared for the appointment, okay? So in terms of our diagram up above, we said this is part A, zero, that's right. We said this is part B, for most of us it's 164.90. And remember, we're talking about Medicare, we're not talking about Medicaid, that's a totally different animal. That's somebody whose income is lower and they don't have as many resources. But most of us pay the $164.90 a month, okay? So your choice when you first come aboard with Medicare is, do I come down what I refer to as the left side of the diagram or do I want to come down the right side of the diagram? Either way, this is a given because this is the government's money. They're going to get it one way or the other. They're going to send you a bill or they're going to take it out of your Social Security. I think overall, Medicare, as far as the benefits, pretty good compared to what I've seen with group plans. Okay. You don't have great big deductibles other than the hospital if you don't do anything. But for the most part, it's, it's pretty robust with what they cover and so on and so forth. So everybody, the assumption is that you have A and B because you can't go any further than that. Okay. Part D, this is a separate plan for the person on the left-hand side, okay? We help analyze those drugs. It is a standalone plan, okay? The lowest plan premium, ugh, the lowest plan premium is $3.20. That doesn't mean that's for you because it's all based on your medications and where you want to fill them, okay? So somebody that has the lowest price plan, they might not take any medications, but when you come aboard with Medicare, the expectation is you will sign up for a Part D plan, even if you don't take scripts, 
Otherwise you get penalized and it's a permanent penalty. So people will say, I don't take anything. I don't think that's right. And we'll say, look, here's a plan that you might want to consider. At least you avoid any penalty. That's the lowest plan. They go all the way up to $100, okay? Now, somebody that has a really expensive plan, they're taking really expensive drugs, okay? They're probably taking a brand name drug, okay? And it, we do the analysis and we'll come back and say, here are some options. We'll also talk about GoodRx. A number of you use GoodRx. It is always a place to look if you think your meds are really expensive. Go out, look at GoodRx, grab the coupon. You have to have a script and you go in and I had it myself not too long ago, kept preaching this and I had a new script and I'm like, $35, that doesn't sound right. Went out, found the coupon, walked in and paid like 10 bucks. So it behooves you to check out GoodRx. And there are other programs out there like that. They're discount cards. Singular is another one. Um, so on and so forth. And there's a few programs out there for like Eloquist. Eloquist, they have some coupons. Eloquist also has the ability to apply for some assistance with Eloquist, but it is often based on your income. So you, you've got some research to do. And again, I at least can give you some insight into you might want to try this or you might want to try that in an effort to maximize or minimize, depending upon how you look at it, your Part D. But this person has a separate card, okay? And then they add a Medigap. Now, the Medigap is the most comprehensive. So the Medigap supplement or Medicare supplement, this is where the language gets a little bit blurry, is, maybe we don't have that one in here. Uh, it is on that page. Yep, let's just stay right there. I think that would be fine. So looking at the agenda and talking more about the Medigap, which is actually page three of the agenda. The Medigap, I don't have the matrix with me, but basically in a nutshell is the Medigap is a lettered plan. It's not a part and it inserts itself into all of the gaps, okay? So the most popular plan right now, and you might hear of it, is Medigap plan G as in go, okay? The G as in go plan starts out for somebody who's about 65 years old at about $100 for a female and about $115 for a male, okay? There are 35 different companies that represent the Medigap plan. The doctor must take the Medigap plan of your choice, even though if they've never heard of who they are, because there's some plans out there with names that you're like, who is Lumico? Who is Greek Catholic Union? Who is this? Well, they are providers of the Medigap. And again, the Medigap plan G will insert itself into all of the out-of-pocket that you see here. So you go to the hospital and it picks it up in its entirety. The 1600 is gone. The only thing you pay on plan G is the part B deductible. So I happen to have plan G. Hard to believe I'm on Medicare, but I am. $226. That's all I pay. And I have a premium of about $105 or $110 right now. That's every month, okay? This plan, you can go to any doctor that takes Medicare anywhere in the 50 United States. There is no network, okay? I am a breast cancer survivor, 10 years now. I wanted the best plan. The premium was reasonable. I came off of a group plan. I was paying $800. So to pay $100 versus eight, that's how I looked at it, okay? Does it mean that I might switch over here? I might someday. I'm, I'll tell you more about it. It does offer some things that this side doesn't, okay? But this is a personal decision. So people will look at it and say, I have peace of mind in the decision I made. I have X number of dollars. If I ever have to spend them, I'm fine with that too. It, it's a personal decision, but I will help you try to examine what your options are, okay? The biggest difference is think of this one as paying up front. So you got $100, you got a Part D. Most of them are not 320. They're in the neighborhood of $11. So let's start here, 164.90. 
264.90, so I'm at 265. So you add 35 bucks for $300 a month. You can go to any doctor that takes Medicare, okay? You have a $226 deductible the very first time that you go out for the year and you're done. You pay your premium. You get to go to any doctor that takes Medicare. If you like to travel, you can go anywhere. They even have a little worldwide coverage as well. You're not faced with any kind of network configuration. Am I in an HMO, a PPO? Do you participate? You don't have any of that. This is called original Medicare. This is your secondary insurance coverage, okay? And this is your prescription drug coverage. This is what's renewable every year, okay? But again, people turn in 65, generally on average, right around $300, okay? And I have about a dozen companies. I have United Healthcare, ARP, I have Mutual of Omaha. I mean, I would show you my list. What's interesting is the premiums are not all the same. So one company might have a $100 premium for Plan G. They all have to pay the same way according to the government's rules. And somebody else has a premium of $140. And you're like, why would I pay $40 more for the very same plan? Well, I'm not sure I would, right? But those are the things that we would uncover for you, okay? So we have a matrix of the companies we represent. We help you with the analysis for the Part D. Every September, we send you a postcard and we say it's open enrollment. Come on in, we'll help you identify what this is. These are guaranteed renewable. They don't come up for renewal every year, okay? So again, a service we provide as a company is we will say, look it, you've been in this for four or five years. The premium goes up every year based on your age and cost of living. We've noticed that it's kind of up there. Are you still pretty healthy? And they'll say yes, and we'll say, great, let's go back to the drawing board. Here's an important fact about the Medigap. The very first time you come aboard, they cannot ask you any medical questions. Very important. So I will have people that will come in that have just been diagnosed for cancer, they're on oxygen, they're on dialysis, the list goes on and on. They need to take a strong look here because they're going to have doctor needs, right? They're going to be in and out, okay? So very important that that person initially either turn in 65 or coming off the group plan, they take a really good look at that. But by the same token, you're in it for a while and your health is still really good. We'll let you know that, look, at if you think you can medically qualify, because there's going to be questions now, let's give it a whirl. And I had two of them earlier this week, slam dunk. No, 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 no. A couple of little scripts went into the provider. Sometimes they do a phone interview. A lot of times they don't. And they got approved right then and there. So they were able to reduce their premium. So we do that too. I mean, that isn't something you have to go out and look for. Okay, so here we go. Kind of coming in a little bit for a landing. Now, the other option, very popular, been around for probably about 17 or 18 years, gaining more traction is called the Medicare Advantage plan. You still have to stay enrolled in part A and B, okay? Because people will say, well, if A and B is combined and it equals C, why would I have to pay for the Part B? No, nope. everybody pays for the Part B. This becomes your primary insurance, okay? That which is called the Medicare Advantage plan. Once in a great while, they might call it Part C. So if somebody says, I have Part C, whoops, Part C. They have just told you that they are an Advantage plan. The other way to know if they're in an Advantage plan you can ask them, what do they pay in premium? Most people will remember I paid zero, right? Sometimes not. You can ask them what they pay for the hospital. Because I'll have people that will say, well, I have X carrier. And keep in mind that the carrier here is the same carrier here. So it gets a little confusing. So the guy says, but wait a minute. I don't pay anything for the hospital. Well, he's here. In the neighbor that says, oh, wait a minute, I pay $325 every day that I'm there. He's here, okay? So a lot of the companies, priority, priority, Blue Cross, Blue Cross, Humana, Humana, Aetna, Aetna. So don't get confused because they're two different animals, okay? I'm paying up front here. Here, I'm probably paying zero. I've never seen so many zero plans in my life, okay? Zero. So what does that really mean? It means that 
You pay as you go. But it doesn't mean everything is no cost to you. It means only the premium is zero. You pay the 164.90. You probably pay nothing to the primary care doctor. Most of them are all zero. I'm independent, so I see them all and have access to them all. When you go to see a specialist, they have to be in the network. So our networks over here are HMOs, HMO point of service plans, and PPOs. I have to make sure my doctor participates. That's why we ask for the doctors. I go see a specialist, it's between $35 and $45 every visit, okay? Now the person over here that might need a lot of specialists, they pay their 226, that's the deductible. $110 premium comes out of their check, okay? They set it up for an EFT, they don't pay 45. So they gotta go X number of times, they don't pay 45, okay? They just satisfied the deductible, they paid more up front. This person pays as they go. Now, by the same token, what happens is the plan will keep track of how many dollars they have spent in terms of co-pays, co-insurance, so on and so forth. The average maximum out-of-pocket, your catastrophic level is right in the neighborhood of $5,000. So I will have people who say, I'm pretty healthy. I'm going to take my chances. If I got to come up with five grand, I can do it. And that might be the approach that they take after they made sure their doctors were in the network, after they made sure that their prescription drug coverage was here. Okay. All right. And they were good to go. Statistically, they would say, all these reports that I read, it's very rare somebody hits the five grand. It takes a lot of effort to get there. Okay. But if I'm over here with $100 or 110 whatever, and I do my math, let's say it's 100 1200 is it possible I could spend more than 1200 over here? It is. I happen to like the freedom and the choice, okay? And again, I told you why I did what I did, okay? But over here, what is attractive that I don't have is the dental, the vision, and the hearing, and it's preventative, okay? So I have to pay extra for all of that. So I do, I add it over here, I've got those plans and I add the dental over here too. But now my price tag has gone from three to 350 or whatever. So back over here, one-stop shopping, okay? You can literally put away your red, white, and blue Medicare card. And this becomes the card that you go into the doctor with. It will list your co-pays, $45 for the specialist, whatever. The most expensive part of the policy is probably a couple things. One, it's the hospital. So they do have a limit on how many days you might have to pay. So you go to the hospital and it's 325 a day and you're in charge of the first five. So five times, let's say 300, it's $1,500. You're gonna get a bill for 1,500. If you're there for 10, you're only gonna get a bill for 1,500 because the max was five and the plan will pick up the other five days, okay? So that's how the hospital will work. Where this starts to feel a little uncomfortable is physical therapy. So, gee, I went and had my shoulder done and now I got to go in and work on my knee or my shoulder or my hip or whatever. You're paying for it every time you go. So physical therapy, you could have 15, 20 visits, right? And now at 30 bucks a pop, okay, now I get a $600 bill. I don't know how you'd feel about that. Other than I would remind you, you started at zero, right? So that's kind of what how you want to gauge it. These are plans that have networks. HMO, I'd stay away from those unless you really know a lot about them. HMOs traditionally, when you went out the net outside the network, if it wasn't an emergency, you paid a hundred percent. Well, you don't want that. The HMO point of service allows you to go outside the network. You might pay a little more. You might pay fifty percent instead of forty percent or 40 instead of 30 or whatever. And then the PPO is the preferred provider organization, okay, in terms of that. So health maintenance organization, point of service, PPO. So we, we explain that in more detail if needed. That's why we ask for the doctors. We've got to make sure that the doctor's in the network. Here's your safeguard with the maximum amount of pocket. It includes the, the, the prescription drugs. So the person that says I don't take any or I take very few and they're very expensive, this gives them the credible coverage that they need 
whether they use it or not, doesn't matter, right? But they are given credit by the government and there's no penalty as a result of that. So one stop shopping, one card, my doctor, my pharmacy. You also get a gym membership. It's called Silver Sneakers. And some of you may have heard of that, okay? And you don't pay for that, kind of nice. So they have a website, you look them up and you say, oh, here's Planet Fitness over on Alpine. Here's so-and-so. The YMCAs do not participate. A lot of the MVPs do, and that's another nice facility, but no YMCAs. They've chosen not to participate. A lot of them have what they call like a mom's meals, which is if you're in the hospital, they will call you and say, look it, we'd like to deliver some frozen meals to you. And they'll send them to you and you put them in your freezer, okay? Again, we said that we have preventative dental, vision, and hearing. Generally, it's two visits to the dentist. They all have a network, so we have to look them up. Is it Delta Dental? Is it MI Blue? Blah, blah, blah. We have to look them all up. That's why we ask for the names of the doctors and dentists and eye doctors and all of that kind of thing. We have um, two visits to the dentist, bite wing x-rays and panoramic x-rays every two. Vision, generally $100 eyewear credit or for contacts, glasses, and you get an eye exam. Doesn't cost you anything. Hearing, becoming a, a big benefit for us as we get older, right? Get a hearing exam and they might say you need some hearing aids. We're going to do some cost sharing. My mom just did that. So finally, I've heard I like my hearing aids. For a long time, it was I don't like them and I spent all this money on them. But anyway, they're working out now. So we've got those added value benefits as well. And if you wanted more dental and vision, you can buy up. So all the plans, and there's probably about 40 different plans out here with about eight or nine different insurance companies. For a 20 or $30 upcharge per month, you can buy more. So the vision becomes a $250 benefit and the dental becomes a $2,500 maximum, et cetera, et cetera. So you can buy up more dental and vision, okay? All right, so in closing, I'm gonna look over here at what I've given you to see if I've missed anything. And then in the meantime, you think about, okay, did she miss anything that I wanna ask her about? I did give you a sheet. It's called the Medicare comparison sheet. You have a left side and a right side. The idea was it was intended to dovetail back here. So if you said, you know what, can I go to any doctor or any hospital, you know that with original Medicare, as long as they take Medicare, you're good to go. If you're with an Advantage plan, it depends. you got to make sure you work within a network, so on and so forth. So that was really FYI. I did include something called the Part D, and it is about the donut hole. Has anybody heard of that? Okay. Again, that's the benefit of having somebody look at your medications. So this is the busy time of the year, come the fall, and people will say, here's my med list. Will you take a look at them? Am I in the right plan? Some people find themselves in what we call the coverage gap or the donut hole. And what that is, is it's a result of them spending a little over $4,000 in retail price of their medications. So very briefly here, I won't spend a lot of time on it. If you are one of these possibilities, then you really wanna come in and see us so that I could explain it in a little more detail. Because what I would tell you is, this was put in place in 2006 by Congress, right? They don't use these plans. I would love for them to use this. They have their own health insurance and it doesn't look anything like this because it is really very convoluted. And as you and I get older, it becomes even that much more confusing on how did they actually do the calculation because one month you walked into the pharmacy and they told you it was $42. And the next time you walked in, it was $100. And you're like, what just happened here? Okay. So basically in a nutshell, if you have, and I'll stand on this side, if you have a Part D, either side, okay? Some of the plans have a premium. We talked about that low premium over there. The Medicare Advantage plan, you don't, it's built into the plan, okay? So there's no premium. Here's an annual deductible. The Medicare Advantage plan doesn't have one of these either, okay? But the standalone one, this year it was 505, okay? That is the retail price 
based on a tier, and generally it was a tier three. So a tier one tends to be generic. Tier two tends to be preferred generic. Tier three is a brand of which they generally don't have a generic equivalent yet, right? And this is a preferred brand. So a lot of the companies, they have their own language, but basically in a nutshell, it boils down to that. So a lot of the plans are designed where you have to pay the deductible of 505 if you have a brand. Well, my mom has a brand and that brand name is Eloquist. Eloquist, we're gonna make the math easy here. Let's say it's $400, which is the retail price. Now on her plan, she doesn't pay 400 because they first start out with a copay. So her copay is $42 every month. Well, what happens is in the meantime, that $400 gets dropped into a bucket. So 11 months later, she has just spent $4,400, right? Well, that's where the donut hole starts. Now, in this particular example, she'd only have one month of paying the following. This is how they figure the donut hole. 400 times 25%. She pays $100, okay? Now that's just for one drug, okay? Well, she has multiple drugs and they all go towards the bucket. So she actually hits this before December, okay? Because they all collectively go in here. Every month, this person, and so does the Advantage plan, they get a statement and it says, here's what the new threshold is for this year. This is where you are in relationship to this. So when my husband first came aboard, he had a lot of brand name medications. And we went back to the doctor and said, nope, can't have a whole lot of these 400s here. Is there anything else that you can come up with? And we were able to reduce it. So those are things you need to know because it can be a big surprise. You go in and all of a sudden now it's $100. Wait a minute, I was just paying 42. The other thing that's interesting about the drug plans is with the standalone ones on the left-hand side, is mail order is not a big deal to them. There's not a lot of big savings for mail order. There is more mail order savings on the Advantage plan side. But to say that if you have a standalone drug plan, can I save you money by doing the 90 day mail order? No, I mean, it's, it's nominal, unless you wanna do it for convenience purposes. Okay, all right. So that was the part D. Again, if you want more understanding of that, we'll certainly spend more time on that. We did give you how to set up a social security account if you've not done that. We also showed you how to turn on your part A only or your part A and part B. Again, we're happy to do that for you. It doesn't take you very long at all. You have to bring in your sign on or your credentials because I can't pull those up off the computer. We also included kind of a cheat sheet here as to who do you call? So remember, we said Medicare, you call about a claim or is something covered, okay? Social Security would be, look at I applied for my Medicare and I'm still waiting for my card. What's the deal here, okay? The who to contact, this was the team. Amy, of course, is in the back. I'm over here. I have no plans to retire. That's why I've got younger people as far as my team is concerned. And they're doing a fabulous job. So I'm most appreciative of that. So here's Kristen. She's another licensed agent. Amy will get licensed later this year. It's important that they have a solid understanding. Medicare is full of rules. Unbelievable. Lots and lots of rules. And then my sister is Sherry. If you come into the office, she works part-time. And then we also have Lauren Kent. She also works part-time. And I make a good cookie. And I will tell you, I think it's equally as good here as David Carrier's. So you will have to assess it for yourself. Uh, so what you have there is I do uh, very much would like your feedback in terms of the evaluation form. Um, and we do have some questions. We'll open it up to that too. Yes, Brenda. Well, both plans, and I didn't mention it, so I'm glad that question came up. They both have international coverage, but what you find with the international coverage is they, with the Medigap, whatever the 
emergency might be, it has to happen within 60 days of being in the country. Whereas we don't have that stipulation with the advantage plants, okay? So that would be one differentiating factor. The other thing is some people have bought additional insurance, and I help with that too, where you could, it'd be more like travel health insurance. In fact, I just came back from Israel. I spent 10 days in the Holy Land and I bought additional insurance for myself because I didn't want to take any chances, okay? So that's what I would do in that case. Yes. Yes. It does not include hearing, dental, and vision. I have separate plans for that, correct? Yes. So you can, and you can add that in any time. It's not subject to when you first came aboard. You can say, now I want it, and we can add it. Yep. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, folks out there. So the question was, dental, vision, and hearing, was it included on the left-hand side? Okay. It is not. So it can be added as a separate plan. And when it comes to dental, it's all about the network. So I'll ask you about your dentist. We participate and have plans with Delta Dental, Ameritas, there's a few other plans. We also have a vision plan, okay? There's two plans there. I think one is like $12 and the other's like $20 a month. But you can always add dental vision and hearing after you first come aboard. So that is always open uh, for future discussion at any time. Anybody else? I gotta remember to repeat the question. So. Basically, the uh, Part D, even though they basically say that it's kind of voluntary, it's... It's not, it's unless not. you want to pay a penalty down the road. Yep. And what they do with the penalty is it's 1% for every month that you weren't there. And then they take an average per year, which is in the neighborhood of about $30, okay? So they take 1% of that for all the months that you did not participate. So for somebody in 2006 that was asked to sign up, and they might not, because that's when the plan became available, 2006, Part D, they probably have a $30 or $40 penalty, and that gets added to their Part D plan. So it gets pretty pricey by not adding it. If you are a veteran, and I didn't mention that, but if you are a veteran, okay, and you have access to the Part D and you have access to the prescription drug plan through the VA, you do not have to have a Part D plan. So it is considered credible coverage in the eyes of Medicare, okay? Just TRICARE for Life. TRICARE for Life, you got it. You don't have to get it then either. No, nope, you're good. Yep, TRICARE for Life's a different, you've got great insurance. Most people stay right with TRICARE for Life. And yeah, so you do, you do, but that's really all you have to do. You don't need to do it. No, nope. your coverage is very good. Mm -mm. No, nope, I would not add to it. No, nope. I mean, if you want to talk more, but most people that I've counseled, no. That's what he said. That's right. That is correct. You have it too? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. And that's the same thing with the post office too. You have to have A and B. Correct. Yes. That you do. Yes. I don't have a lot of experience with that. I mean, I have people that I could go to to ask more about that. But to say that I have a lot of clients in that situation, I don't. You know, I had one recently, her daughter lives in Canada. She's going to spend X number of months there. You know, she's not a Canadian citizen, so she doesn't qualify for any of that. And what we're going to look there at is um, additional coverage. So above and beyond. Yep. And can you, uh, can you overview what is covered with long-term care, Medicare? So nothing is covered in terms of long-term care, okay? So Medicare is very clear. You might find yourself in the skilled nursing facility, okay? If you have the Advantage plan, you're going to start paying at day 21. If you have the Medigap supplement, you're going to start paying after day 100. So 
Medicare is not about long-term care or custodial care at all. That's right. That's correct. Yes. Yep. But don't wait too long. That's right. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Anything else as a question or from our audience today? Was this helpful? Okay, learn something new maybe? Okay, we would love to have your evaluation forms turned in. Again, the offer that we have is come have a cookie with us. Come and see us, you'll either meet with me or you will meet with Kristen. Amy will also be there. And it's generally two appointments for those of you that are turning 65, if you want help, we don't do it all in one appointment, it's overwhelming. So it's generally an hour, hour and a half, the first appointment. We kind of get your feet wet. You ask all your questions. If it makes sense to put together a recommendation, it doesn't really in your case with TRICARE because I've looked at it. But if it makes sense to come back and help you decide and make a decision, I do the enrollment. So this afternoon before Amy and I came, we had somebody who just moved into town. They had no additional insurance. All they had was the blue sheet. And they're like, oh, we got to do something. So we were able to get them all signed up. They had just signed up for their part B and they wanted to start April 1st. So we filled out the paperwork. I'll go back and enter everything and they'll get it for April 1st. But ideally you wanna have a little bit longer term plan rather than just a week and a half, okay? Nancy, yes. Before you turn 25, should you? 65? That'd be nice if we were still 25. <laughs> Yeah. As far as getting with me, yes. I would say probably three to four months in advance. Okay. Yep. Yep. That's a good question. You're the same building as if you were uh, Cursor? Yes. Ron Corser and Associates is the husband. We changed the name. And the reason we changed the name is my husband sold his part of the practice to the younger advisor. The younger advisor said, I'm not Ron Corser. I'm not going to brand myself as Ron Corser. That was the only reason for the name of the change. But yes, we are in the same building. We're behind Medawar Jewelers on Charlevoix and 28th Street, across from uh, Walmart. But we're a white building, not too far into the park there on the left-hand side. Very easy to find. Yep. It is Cascade. That is correct. Yep. Yeah, they refer to it as Centennial Park, but when you make that turn, we're right there on the left-hand side. Very easy to find. Yes. Okay, anything else? Yes, you sir. You originally sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan and then down the road you decide you want to switch over to the Medicare. Yep. Is there a penalty? There is not. And here, I forgot to mention this. So here's how that works, even though the diagrams aren't up there. If you start at Medigap and within 12 months, of coming aboard, you think, ooh, I really want the Advantage plan. They give you a trial right either way, the first 12 months of first coming aboard, okay? So let's say you came aboard, you went with the Advantage plan to start five years later. You say, you know what? I remember that Medigap. I wonder if I can qualify for that, okay? You would come see me in the fall because you can't get out of the Medicare Advantage plan until the end of the year, okay? And then we would look at the Medicare, we would look at the questions to see whether or not you would qualify. You have to qualify. There is no penalty. Correct. There is no penalty. And most of the questions are pretty significant. I mean, they're more like knockout. Do you use a handicap sticker? You do. They're not going to take you. Okay. Are you being treated for, for cancer? Well, you're going to have to wait probably two plus years. Are you receiving physical therapy? They want the physical therapy done before they take you. You're a diabetic. Do you have 35 units of insulin you take every day? I mean, the questions are, you know, we let you see the questions beforehand. They vary a little bit from company to company, but not much. And you're either in or you're not in. It's not that you're in and then they rate you up. I mean, you are either accepted at the rate I quote you or you are not. And if you were in the Advantage plan, you stay in the Advantage plan. I mean, you always have coverage. You might. And some people, you know, they can't kick you out. They can't. They can't ever kick you out. And a lot of people, but some people will say, I don't know. I mean, I have a crystal ball. I take it out during the fall. And we look, and I'm like, if you're not sure, the best thing to do is probably start with the Medigap because you're not sure. You want to get your feet wet. 
So this past fall, we had 45 people who went, who, can I keep going? Okay, we had 45 people who said, I don't need to pay $100, I wanna go over here, okay? So they also had a trial right because they had been over here from day one, let's say they were there five years, they weren't, but they were here five years. They're trying it out here. The government does say, if you made a mistake or your health changes or something about this doesn't agree with you anymore, they have to take you back over here from the company you left, okay? It's called a trial right. So you had it in the very beginning when you first made your decision and then I'm in the Medigap. I've been in it since day one. So I would have a trial right by trying the Advantage plan. And if I don't like it, the carrier I'm with today, they have to take me back. 12 months. If it's 13 months, now I got to answer the questions. Yep. Yep. Good question. Yes, Chris. Oh, you know, I forgot to tell you, I don't work for free. So the question that Chris is asking is, how do I get compensated? Okay. Every insurance agent that helps people with Medicare receives the very same amount. Okay. So when a person is coming aboard for the very first time that is with the Advantage plan, the payment this year is $601. Okay. That's for the whole year. If you stay with me, then it's half of that. And every year the numbers increase. So last year was 500 and some $78. Then it went up to 600, so on and so forth. So I'm compensated as a result of what Medicare and Medicaid says the agent can be paid. So years ago, it would be somebody who said, I'm going to put them over here. I get a bigger commission. I'll put them here rather than put them here. Uh-uh. Government says, no, everybody receives the same amount. Okay. The prescription drug plans somebody brand new, they pay in the neighborhood of $90 for the whole year, okay? If you stay in the drug plan the next year, it's half of that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, no, the insurance company will pay the $600. Yes, correct. No, we never charge for our time. We're always compensated, not always, but the compensation comes from the insurance company. So consulting with us, calling us, there's never a charge for any of that. And the good news is I've been doing this for so long that it's called the power of compounding, right? So you take good care of your clients, they stay with you, and then some come see me, some don't. But in the meantime, we take good care of them, and then I get paid every year or every month or however the structure is. Um, and we also have a newsletter, and I think we've got some of those, or were those were in the folder, the newsletters? Yep. So we're very proud of that. It's a quarterly newsletter and it just kind of keeps you up to date on things. The other thing is, and I know I've walked away from the camera, but here is a Medicare official booklet. Okay, so if you have any interest in, okay, I want to see the way Medicare says it, you're welcome to take the booklet. This right here is called the Baby Boomer's Guide to Medicare Planning. It's just another way of learning more about Medicare. So either one of these are, are available to you. The other thing I would mention, they're right over here, is if you're in a plan and not um, TRICARE for life, but if you know of anybody in an Advantage plan and they don't like what they have, this year, Priority Health has a five-star plan. The government rates all of the Advantage plans with a certain number of stars. Highest star rating is five. So if somebody is interested in a five-star plan, they don't have to wait for the annual election period, okay? They can actually give us a call and say, I don't like the plan that I'm in. It's not a five-star plan. What do you think? And we'll go through everything with them. Who are your doctors? What are your medications? But when you are a five-star plan, this is a big deal for Priority Health, okay? Blue Cross was a five-star last year. They are not a five-star this year. This allows anybody who's in Medicare to make an election outside of the cycle that I just described, okay? So we've had people who don't have anything, they get a five-star plan. We've had people who have the Medigap and they said, it's time for me to get out, too expensive. They get a five-star plan. It has to be priority health and it has to make sense. But 
this is a big deal for them, okay? And you're gonna hear more about it. They've got billboards that are out there now and so on and so forth. So five-star plan. Yes, Chris. You had some materials that you showed. If someone online would like them, would you send them to them? Absolutely, yep. Just let us know who you are and we'll be happy to do that. Yes. So let me wrap it up because some of you, and then I'm happy to help you too. Um, I'm going to wrap it up. And again, thank you very much for coming. All the material is yours. We would love for you to just provide the evaluation form. Yes. Certainly. For those of you that would like us to mail anything that I've made reference to here, uh, we had the Medicare booklet that came directly from Medicare. Happy to send that. Then we had another document, it, just say baby boomer, we'll, we'll know which one that is, okay? And then lastly, we also had the five-star card that told you a little bit more about what you could do, and those plans were Medicare, Priority Health, their five-star plans are the HMO point of service plans, so there's either three or four plans that you might be eligible for. One thing I failed to mention about the Advantage plan too is it is based on where you live. So we're talking about people that are living in the state of Michigan, okay? If you ever move, you cannot keep your Michigan Medicare Advantage plan. We help you find another plan in another state, okay? But it is based on where you live. But zero is zero. Anything else? What if you're a snowbird and you're on Michigan? Not a problem. Used to be more so in the past, if you were a snow, if you were, if you were a snowbird, it used to be a problem that they would say, oh, you got to be here six months or 10 months or whatever. It no longer is any kind of issue for being a, a, a snowbird. So your Michigan plan is your residence. That's fine. You go elsewhere. If you have a medical emergency or urgent care, you're always covered. In most of the plans now also, they will say you need to see a specialist it won't cost you any more than what it would have cost in Western Michigan. I mean, you might have to call the plan just to make sure who it is that you wanna to go to see. Again, not a medical emergency or urgent care. I, I wanna see a dermatologist, can I go see Dr. So-and-so? It's probably not a bad idea to call the plan and say, look it, I wanna go see the dermatologist, I wanna make sure that it's covered. And how much is it gonna cost? Anything else, Chris? No. Well, thank you again for all the questions and for your time. And I hope to see you and we'll leave it with that. So thank you. All right.